The work of the neo-Marxist critic Raymond Williams became decisive for me because he had a way of conceiving of culture as dynamic and about the relationship between a dominant center, what he called the dominance culture, and the margins reconceived as residual and emergent forms of culture. The residual is past practices once dominant that still affect the culture of the present in a powerful way. Emergent is what is associated with the new. For Raymond Williams, it's a set of new meanings and practices that are brought to bear in conversation with the dominant. So it's important to understand that the emergent doesn't have a meaning without a dominant. They were, it's, a, it's a kind of tension, a negotiation in which the emergent wants to reform the dominant. And the dominant, meanwhile, is trying to incorporate, assimilate, diffuse certain challenges that these other forms of culture might be posing. And that seemed to me a great way of thinking about what was going on in the field that was otherwise being known as multicultural literatures. So the book that I've just published with New York University Press, which is called Emergent U.S. Literatures, From Multiculturalism to Cosmopolitanism in the Late 20th Century, really that title encompasses a train of thought, which is that if you begin studying marginalized traditions in, the, in American writing, it becomes powerful to think about them as emergent rather than multicultural traditions. So when multiculturalism became enshrined as a sort of the way American education wanted to teach its literary and cultural traditions, the most emphasis was placed on African American cultural traditions and on women's writing and feminism and women's literature. And the writing that interested me were the people that didn't fit into those. So for, for me that was Native American, Hispanic American, especially Chicano writing, and Asian American writing. So one of my favorite examples of this is actually Maxine Hong Kingston, who um, wrote a series of personal narratives and then a wonderful novel called Tripmaster Monkey. She grew up in Stockton, California, listening to all of the stories of her Chinese grandparents who had emigrated. And she realized that the stories were compelling to her on the other hand, as she began imagining them, she didn't find a place for herself in them because she was a woman in a Chinese tradition. And American culture was teaching her all about how to be empowered on the basis of her gender. So when she wrote her book called um, The Woman Warrior, which was a set of interlocking stories that were inspired by her own family's history and by the stories that she'd heard of from China, she changed the stories. She made them kind of feminist stories. Instead of it being a male Chinese warrior, it was the woman warrior. And this was her way of making the traditions that she had grown up with her own and also American in some way. The funny thing is that when mainstream US reviewers read this, they thought of it not as American, but as somehow an authentic view into Chinese culture. Ah, here was our first take of this exotic culture, which was not exactly what she intended, which means that in some sense, she was forced to contend with what I refer to as the horizon of expectations. People expect Chinese literature to do a certain thing. They expect American literature to do something different. And she was bringing them together and say, look, this is the new American literature. It's going to be both American and Chinese, and it's about California, and it's about being a woman. And she got into trouble with some Chinese American male writers who thought that she shouldn't have been touching, changing these myths. But she would think to herself, well, Shakespeare did it. Why shouldn't I be allowed to do this? And so for me, this is a, an example of the sort of syncretism of this writing, or the hybrid nature in which the writing itself wants to change and move outside of specific narrow boxes that we might think of as American literature or Chinese American literature into something else.